Happy Wednesday. Welcome to the best day of the week. As you know, Wednesday is the best day of the week because on Wednesday we take a look at a little bit of wisdom from the Word of God. And we have been finding that wisdom primarily inside the book of Proverbs. We've got a good proverb for you today. Can't wait to share it with you. You remember, as you've heard me say countless times before, that our goal is not to burn through these Proverbs as fast as we can. It's not to check a box of holy activity for the day. Instead, what we're looking for here is something to sip and savor the taste of, to keep with us for a long time, to think about, ponder, wonder, and pray about how these words could shape our life. And the way that biblical wisdom primarily works for us is this. We hear a word from God and look back to see how God has formed life to work, to see that at play, to see it at work to see it in other people's lives or in our life, or to see times we failed to meet that and realize that if we had had this wisdom from God and acted on it, it would have been better for us, safer for us, healthier for us, something like that. And in thinking about that, we get to walk into the future a little bit more mature, a little bit more ready, a little bit more wise. Our proverb for today is going to focus us on something that's really important, which is that God's word is a place that we can come to check for guidance. You might remember that there's a lot of themes that run through the book of Proverbs, friendships, finances. One of the themes that we often see is decision-making. And this is an important thing for us to do, to think about how we make our decisions, not based on what others say, not based on our gut, but based on what God's word forms for us. Here's how it goes. Proverbs 14, 12 says this. There is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way to death. Get it? Here's what I think about when I'm hearing this proverb. I probably spend enough time or maybe too much time trying to remind myself and reminding you that we got to work hard to make sure that we're not listening too much to all the voices in the world that are trying to shape the way that we think and feel and purchase. There's a lot of different voices out there constantly competing for our attention, constantly competing for our devotion. And that's true. That's an important thing to be wary of. But in addition to that, this proverb reminds us that one of the voices that we need to be aware of is a voice that is incredibly familiar. It's our own voice. You see, in contrast to what the Word of God teaches us, sometimes we pretend we're seeking God's wisdom, but we're really just trying to justify what we already think, what we've already decided to do. You see, growing in godly wisdom takes this extremely difficult step. Maybe a step we should take every day. Not only do we need to hold the world's voices up to say, how do these meet or fail in front of God's word? We also have to hold up our own voice. We have to realize that even our own thoughts and our own desires can absolutely be contrary to the word of God. This is a difficult thing to imagine, but here's the thing. You and I, as followers of Jesus in this crazy world, you and I have to acknowledge that God knows us better than even we know ourselves. And that's hard to imagine because we've been inside our minds always. We know all the experiences we've had. The thoughts that come to our mind, we know them. We know ourselves maybe better than people that we share life with, even if we're with them a lot. And yet, you and I are to believe that God knows us even better than we know ourselves. He knew us before we were born. He remembers the things that we've forgotten. And he understands even what makes us tick. You see, here's the thing. Just because something seems right to us, it does not remove from us the need 
to bring God's word and wisdom into our decision-making processes. I don't remember where I saw this. I don't know who to quote. But years ago, I remember bumping into a Christian author or speaker who says, the world's wisdom would say, if it feels right, do it. But we aren't after the world's wisdom. We're after something significantly more important. That author said, in contrast to that, God's word says something like this. Instead of, if it feels good, do it. How about, for love's sake, endure it. That stuck with me. In part because it reminds me with crystal clarity of how our Lord approached life and approached death for you and for me. Not with much of an eye toward what feels good or what felt like he wanted to do, but that he was willing to set aside that stuff to endure suffering and even death for you and for me. Because of that, you and I get to walk forward, set free, redeemed, and forgiven, and wonder how now shall we live, Lord, and part of what we should hear back if we're listening for his voice and not just our own is to yield to be willing to set aside all the voices that we hear that are trying to shape us, even our own, and listen first to God's word. Here the proverb is again. There is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way to death. Assumed. There's also a way that is right to God. To chase after it, to live it, to learn it, to trust in it. You know, that's life. Let's close a prayer. Lord, help me to be wise, not according to the world's standards, but according to yours. Help me to choose daily the way of wisdom and the way of Jesus. Amen. As always, thanks for taking time. See you next time.